heavy. Bored. The next section in this book is called Magpie Song. Uh, and magpie is, of course, uh, a type of bird, and it comes into a lot of kind of uh, poetry throughout the centuries here. You can find references to magpies, you know, a thousand years ago, re- referenced in kind of ancient Chinese poetry or something like that, right? Let me just say, this is where my, my kind of... When I say that I view this as kind of lazy, it's mainly about this section and then beyond, where this is where I think it gets very lazy and it starts to rely on that outside thing, that environmentalism, the kind of ideology outside of the book, uh, to give a lot of these poems meaning. So facts on page 31, uh, the real work on page 32. Uh, pine tree tops on page 33 these are the first three poems in this section and it's just this is where it got lazy and i think this is where i really started to turn on the book itself and my main complaint is that these three poems the three i just mentioned facts the real work and pine tree tops they're pieces of poems they're not complete so it's half the work, which is why I call this lazy, right? This is just the sentiment. So these poems are all just little portraits of things that happen, um, little scenes throughout his kind of, you know, hunter-gatherer lifestyle that he wants you to know about. And it just relies on the sentiment. Snyder's own nobility giving it the meaning. And they're not quite scoldy or snarky in terms of like what we would consider in terms of the internet kind of culture today, but they are a little bit, listeners, if you read through this, right? And again, these poems are very, they're laments. They're kind of sad. They're laments for a world, but what confuses me about them and what I think makes them not as honest is that I think they're laments for a world that Snyder never knew. When he talks about how it would be better if it was like before when... um, Native Americans were the only people in, in, in all of the Americas, and they were, you know, living the land and having their little tribal wars and whatever it is. Uh, and he wasn't alive for any of that, right? He's not that old. I think he's in his 90s. He's still alive today, so, uh, but he's up there. I think he's like 92, 93 now. And I just couldn't help but see through this, this thing that like, dude, you're imagining a world that you never lived in. And then you're telling me it's sad that we're not living in this imagined world. I just, you know, I don't believe it. I kind of see through it and I find it a little disappointing that this is considered Pulitzer Prize worthy. But again, you know, that's not up to me. I'm not on these committees. I'm not in these meetings. And I certainly wasn't in these meetings in 1975. So, you know, all I can do is just give you my honest take on it. I can't, you know, do anything else about it. And, it, you know, okay, people want to say, well, you look at you criticizing this Pulitzer Prize winning book. It's like, yeah, okay, you know, take it or leave it, dude. There's plenty of other people out there that are praising the shit out of this Pulitzer Prize winning book. So, you know. Resources. American resources. Being bored? You know, some activities are not intentional, right? It shows such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life. Forward. I, I aspire to boredom, Heavy. I should say. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. Has you the night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do.